In most online platforms and stores, animated films are often grouped together, regardless of subject matter, as simply animated, or are arguably worse, placed under the banner of kids and family movies, something done even to the disapproval of the very filmmakers responsible for them. Animation is not a genre, nor has it ever been. It's a medium, as expensive in scope and possibility as the other prevalent medium of cinema, that being the use of film itself. The way animation is mischaracterized is detrimental not just to the medium, but it harms filmmaking as a whole by limiting the potential of storytelling possibilities. When considering the public perception of this issue, there is little reason to look further than the perceived premier movie awards of the world, the Oscars. This isn't because they have some finality in determining the matter, but rather because they often exemplify these misconceptions about animation to their highest degree. Amid stories of voting members of the Academy not even bothering to watch most movies in the category, and contrasting that with the history of the filmmakers lauded by that very same group, we see this attitude is rooted in a baseless, borderline elitist attitude towards the medium, maintained not by accomplished filmmakers, but by critics and executives, whose judgment has been called into question for monetary gain and insider politics as often as for their actual decisions on cinema. Filmmakers such as Brad Bird, incidentally the director of Incredibles 2, a movie nominated for Best Animated Feature, has made public statements on how the medium is mistreated in that regard, with compounding comments by Guillermo del Toro, himself an Oscar-winning director responsible for multiple winning features, both in Best Animated Feature and Best Picture. This is a severe disconnect that harms the potential of the medium, as it both discourages and discredits genuine, important stories being told, and is a problem mostly centered on the Western, Hollywood-centered perception of filmmaking, complete with all its historical faults. From the very inception of animation as a form of filmmaking, more serious or pungent subject matter and different formats have been approached mostly in foreign animation. Today, that's mostly represented in the Eastern animation industry, seen through anime and their own movies, but this dates back to the very beginning of animated movies. One of the earliest animated features of all time, dating back to 1918, is the Argentinian movie Sing de Har Hastres, a movie that portrayed the real and then recent history of a German commander who sunk an Argentinian ship in an attempt to blame the Allied powers of World War I. This is a contemporary political incident leading into the politics of a world war that saw its end on the very year this movie came out. The message of the movie wasn't written. It was compiled using witness testimony from survivors and effectively acted as a research documentary, with animation enabling it to then portray an incident to which there was no footage. This is the third ever documented animated movie in history, and it was enough of a disruptive force as to be confiscated by the government at the time. Most people won't have ever heard of this, but similar stories still get told in the medium. The 2007 film Persepolis serves as a biopic, set against the background of the Iranian Revolution through the eyes of a child. It effectively gives visual form to memories and permits a story with no existing or sometimes possible visuals to unfold on screen. These are just a few examples of animated movies whose genre would be a documentary and a biopic respectively. Even in scripted fiction stories, returning to the aforementioned Eastern animation industry, we have the likes of the movie Akira. Today a cult classic, it's had sweeping influence in movie making in ways that could rival any of the great feature films of the past. In a rough, exposing, and often grotesque depiction of themes such as the extremes of militaristic control, unchecked capitalism, and the alienation of the youth as well as the disenfranchised. Most of the general public might not expect this from an animated work, mostly due to the conditioning of the widespread misconception of animation as a genre. On a lighter note, consider something akin to the Wilhelm scream. First popularized by Star Wars, one of the most influential films of all time, this soundbite has had widespread homages throughout cinema. Something directly analogous happens with the cinematography of Akira. The use of cinematography over animation here being very deliberate. Naturally, the bulk of such imagery would come from other animated films. But if the medium is that transcendent, you'd expect to see this influence even in live-action films instead, just as you can find some examples of the Wilhelm scream in animated work. 
Well, here's a shot from the movie Nope, directed by Best Original Screenplay Academy Award winner Jordan Peele just last year. This game of references and inspiration isn't some new trend being put forth by filmmakers that grew up with animation as part of the pop culture zeitgeist. This cross-medium exchange has existed from about as early as it possibly could. For a direct example, the first ever animated series to be considered an anime is Astro Boy, penned by Ozama Tezuka. From that very point, the value in ideas and visual possibilities of the medium was seen by the best and brightest filmmakers of the time. Stanley Kubrick, one of the greatest directors of all time by just about every metric, was essentially at the height of his critical acclaim after a sweeping four awards performance at the Oscars for Spartacus. And during production of his next film, 2001 A Space Odyssey, he was inspired by the visuals and futurism from Astro Boy, even reaching out to Tezuka to be the art director on said feature. Now, this partnership wouldn't materialize due to scheduling reasons, but the core point is that the recognition of artistry across mediums by those with the most understanding of it predates the misconceptions that animated films are homogenous in their public or message. In the same way that deeper themes and real-world subject matter in animation predate the current status quo of seeing animation as mostly children's fiction movies. This isn't a natural development of the animated medium. It's a misconception that's been compounding for decades. All told, animation has a very significant presence in the world of cinema. But in several levels, that presence is rendered hollow. It's important to recognize the autonomy animation can have from traditional cinema and also the ways in which it can work in tandem with it to reach beyond its boundaries, allowing for the challenge of conventional storytelling and a direct connection of themes and visuals, regardless of genre. By disregarding the history of animation, its status as a medium, and its influence in filmmaking, we are also denying the very artistic vision of filmmakers who either work with or draw inspiration from it. And in a time when we have more access than ever to understand the minds behind the films that shape our culture, it's frankly time we did better.